Well, let's do some probing around, see if we can find out what these power supply rails are. The diagram here does say what they are, some of them at least. This one's not numbered, it's got a 6.3 volt, which you can't see on screen, which is well, minus 6.3 volt, doesn't give a pin number. Pin 10, pin 17, 18, 19 and 20 should all be rails. I don't know what a zero volt rail is yet, I've got to try and find that. I'm going to have to probe around just try and figure out where the zero volt reference is for all these voltages. And I've got my multimeter set up for volts DC and volts AC as you can see. This bundle of wires here, which I think is minus 17, there we go. So that's ground reference. So that should be minus 17.5, we're slightly off there. AC ripple, nothing showing up. And then we want pin 20, which is here. So that's 77 volts, no ripple showing up. Pin 19, loads ripple on there, and 3.6 volts. 21 volts AC on pin 19. So 19 and 17 are a bit of a strange setup. I don't think there's really much smoothing on those particular pairs anyway, it's a bit of a weird setup. So 17 and 19 should be very similar. And there's 19 here, yeah, very similar indeed. Pin 18 should be 75 volts. Yeah, it's getting 72, so that's sitting slightly low. And then somewhere there's a minus 6.3 volt rail. There's a 25 volt rail. Interesting, that's not even mentioned. So there's two minus 17s, is there? That's interesting. I may have not seen everything on the diagram here. There you go, it's minus 6.4 there, there it is. Yeah, pin 7, that's on. Got minus 9 there on pin 6. There will be some AC circuitry coming in here as well from the transformers because they come in. 28 volts DC there with a lot of ripple. That's on pin 3. So we do have some ripple there. Definitely got some ripple on some of those rails. So let's just recap the damn thing. So I'm going to put some fresh solder on these caps here, just to uh, help make it easier to desolder. It does make a difference. I'm just going to take these caps out and just replace them. I haven't even tested them. I'll test them after I take them out. In circuit can be problematic anyway, but I just want to replace them and have done with it. I don't want to mess around. I'm not going to sit down and evaluate how good these all are. These caps are 60 years old. It's not worth messing around. Let's just take them out, replace them, and then you don't have to worry about it. So as always I bend these so you can see the markings as much as possible and hopefully the negative polarity mark although most capacitors have this band around the end like the actual dimple on them it's like a channel around them and that actually tells you the orientation anyway because that's the positive side I think just about all the time but I think I've seen an instance where it hasn't been anyway I suppose you try and get these aligned up to each other so they look all nice and tidy so the heat zone gets right through the board get to the other side and fly on the other side as well I'm using my very fluxy solder here. I've got the thinner stuff I could use. I'm using the big chunky stuff because it's got loads of flux in it. And this is an old board, so it's going to need it just to help it to uh, come out a bit nicer. I've only got the temperature on 280 degrees. I'm trying not to lift the pads off the board and sort of stuff because these older boards, they can just disintegrate as you're desoldering them or working on them because the uh, adhesive isn't so good. So I tend to use a lower temperature as much as possible. Next two are installed. I might just do some uh, extra heating on the top side there because it hasn't flowed across the pads as well as I'd like. So I smashed this cap and measured 0.6 ohms at 42 microfarad. That's absolutely fine. It seems fine. I don't have a capacitor to replace it with right now anyway, so I'm going to leave that one as it is. These two measured 31 ohms, 17 microfarad. Both of them did. So they're both way high. So those are going to be replaced. I've done the caps on that board apart from one. That's the big one. Let's power it up again and see what happens. See if there's any difference. Make some biggest range. I expect it operate the same way. Now someone in the chat did point out it could actually potentially be because I don't have the casings on it. So it could be as it warms up it, it starts to give the error. Yeah, there we go, it's creeping upwards now. This hasn't changed anything. I was thinking then for a second that maybe the caps were bad enough to cause a problem, but that isn't looking any different. Now there's plenty of other capacitors around, there's also some of those carbon composite resistors, lots of those in it. I might have to go around and check all those to make sure they're not off value, but that could certainly be a problem too. But someone in the chat did say it could be potentially because I don't have the covers on. You know, introducing noise to the circuitry. So let's put a cover on. So it did seem to drop it slightly. So I figured out how to get this board out. It wasn't actually that bad. It's a bit hard to actually see it, but what I actually had to do is take the side panel off and just through the circuit board here, there's actually a screw right there, which I have taken out. 
and that is what attaches to the uh, through this panel. Originally I was thinking I might take this panel out but thinking it didn't really make sense to do that. I've tested capacitors on it, I'm getting some bad cap readings on most of these actually. A couple of them seem to be testing okay but most of them are testing bad. You know really high ESRs, 10s, 20 ohm sort of thing. Some like this one and this one here tested okay, this one tested okay, all the smaller ones didn't. So I think I need to recap this board. And I also looked at this board over here. My normal course of action is to replace every single capacitor on a piece of gear and just have done with it, right? So that's it, they're done, that's the end of it. But there's also this board under here, this metal shield. I'm thinking, well, how do you get to that? Well, I've already loosened these off. There's a nut here. Oh no, I haven't taken the panel off yet, I've only loosened the nuts. I think I've got this right, yeah, there we go. So I'd loosen that one off. Let's move this foot out of the way. I think it slides out like that to reveal some more of the inside. I was a bit worried about taking the nut off in case it wasn't a stud, in case it was a bolt and you had to try and get to a screw head somewhere. <laughs> anyway, that's what's inside there. Here's that big cap, which we could see before. But obviously this is what was shielded. So we need to actually put some deoxidant stuff on these switches to make sure the switch contacts are all good. It's interesting the way this board is floating around like this. I'm pretty sure that's not a good thing. Um, why is it like this? That just doesn't seem right, does it? I think there should be foam in there to hold this thing in place. So originally I was a bit worried because like I said the board was sitting at an angle so that's a bit weird. And there is what looks like remains of foam inside there. So I think it used to be foam mounted and that's all disintegrated. And now it's just sort of floating around. But I need to test the caps on this board as well. So what I think I'm going to do is unplug these wires from here. And that should allow me to lift the board out and just hinge it over this way. This wire is fixed. There's one wire here which is like a silicon or something like that on there, I'm not quite sure, it's interesting, it seems like a silicon wire. There are a few other ones which I could actually unplug but that one doesn't appear to be a plugged wire. So in order to get this out I need to unplug these longer ones over here so I can hinge the board over. Because all these other wires come from this end anyway. And that'll at least let me get in here so I can put the foam replacement in there. Right, let's test these capacitors in here. Let's have a look. Yeah, 15.6 ohms. Probably a bit on the high side. 1.4, 3 3.3, 122, that's 100. 28 ohms, 10 microfarad. There's a 10 microfarad, but the resistance is a bit high. So there probably is some recapping needed here as well. So there's the ball tucked out of the way, and in here is all this old, well, what's left of the foam, which is actually stuck to the plastic here. So you get this scrape and it's all just fall out. I'll get rid of this old garbage that's in here. There you go. Definitely needs to be foam. Once upon a time. So I thought let's play around with some foam. I've got this thin stuff here which I've been... No, it's from packaging from China, you know. Anyway, I'll shove that inside those two slots. And it's almost the right thickness, it's just touching each end, I'm not sure if it's ideal. Maybe it needs to be a bit thicker. So I decided to replace all the capacitors on this board, because why not? This is a critical board, so I thought I'd just do them all and have done with it. The board is now mounted in the foam, that's much better than it was before, look at that, nice and solid. And wrapped around the foam, that should be good. I'll put those two connectors back on again. What you're going to do is go through and lift all these other connectors off and slide them back on again, just to refresh your connections. They may be gold plated, but they're still old gold plated and they do have problems with tarnishing. I know some people say gold doesn't tarnish. Yes, it does. You do get issues with vapors and stuff inside equipment. Moisture creates problems. Who knows what kind of environment it's been in? You don't know. But I do find that even gold plated terminals and gold plated edge connectors can give trouble. I've found it, I've proven it multiple times. Yes, it helps, doesn't completely solve it. When you've got something which is really old, you know, 20 plus years old, expect you need to give them a clean. Reset all these and that'll be that. So I've done all the caps on that board, put the reinstalled that, I've got the foam in there, sitting in the foam nicely. I've done some deoxid here and all the switch contacts which are inside here. Cleaned all that up, got rid of all the old foam that was in there, which is all coating inside this panel and everything. Got rid of all that old rubbish so it doesn't get into the switch contacts later on. So that part's all good. There's a box over here, I'm not quite sure what's in there. I'm guessing there's some capacitors inside that too, but I don't see immediately how to get that apart. I'm not going to worry about that just now. What I'm going to look at now is this board here. I think I will actually recap it. I, I did test it and it did seem fine. I think I will pull this out and actually recap it because I'd rather just have it all done and forgotten about then. You don't have to worry about it ever again. So the key to getting this board out appears to be to actually bring it out sideways. 
because you've got the wire on the back which comes through a hole we're all trying to guide through at the same time you've also got these other connectors this here I pull these off so purple is the bottom one brown is the top one you want to get these mixed up and I've got just enough wire there have I oh, there we go just enough to pop it out all right, so now I can get to both sides of the board and I can do these capacitors. So on the back of the board here, you can see you've got these glass nipples sticking out. We have to watch out for those, have to make sure we don't hit those or anything. That one there is not looking like it's soldered very well. I might just re-solder that one. So I'm about three quarters of the way through replacing the capacitors on this board. I got to this one here. This isn't a literalytic, this is a tantalum capacitor. Sometimes it's not always easy to tell. I know there's been times when I've actually replaced tantalums by mistake, it has happened. This particular one doesn't have any compressed end, like normally got this little ring around them, which is compressed on the electrolytics. Tantalums don't usually have that. So if it's plain size like this, it's probably a tantalum. And this one's also sleeved. So just watch out for that. It's a tantalum, I'm going to leave that one alone. I trust tantalums on this have been over voltage, so I'm going to leave that one as it is. So the first one's a 20 microfarad, it's measuring 19.6 at 100 hertz, and it's 2.3 ohms, and that's the one which was here. The next one is the same spec, almost exactly 20 microfarads and 3.1 ohms, so slightly higher, and that's the one which is here. 10 microfarad, 15 volt, it's measuring 14 microfarad and 13 ohms, and that's the one which was here. So 200 microfarad, 3 volt, it's measuring 250 at 1.3 ohms, that's probably still alright, and that's the one which was up here measuring 121 and 6 ohms, so slightly higher in resistance but not too bad and that is the one which was up there. But these two I'm going to leave because if I move those and change them out it may affect the frequency response of this unit and may cause some other problems so I'm just going to leave those alone for now and if I do need to come back and change them then I will.